evening, everyone. <laughs> we can get it. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the meeting was already called to order at 545. We are in executive session. And now this is the public session of the Board of Education Monday, June 21st, 2021. Uh, we're going to take things a little bit out of order and just start with the retirement recognition. Um, and I want to um, introduce Melissa Szymanski and Maureen Caraballo to begin um, the recognition of Dr. Valerie henning -Pima. Oh. For Dr. Valerie Henning Piedmont, in honor of your upcoming graduation. Letters of gratitude. Dear Valerie, I'm writing this letter to you to express my sincere gratitude for your remarkable leadership as superintendent of schools. Very few leaders can attest to leading a school district through a global pandemic while concurrently maintaining and promoting a vision squarely focused on all children. Through your dedication, countless hours of hard work, and professionalism, the district has made great strides, including maximizing continuous instruction and ensuring as much in-person learning for children as possible. In my role, I have had the opportunity to work closely alongside you. I would like to take a few moments to publicly highlight some of your many accomplishments in direct support of children since you arrived in Hastings in celebration of the tremendous difference you have made in a short period of time. You've created a number of communication forums, meetings with the PTSA and SEPTA, superintendents chats, weekly updates, the Hastings Daily, building faculty meetings, board student liaison meetings. You've introduced, a panoram you've introduced panorama surveys to better understand the Hastings climate and social emotional needs of students. You've pushed the system forward in diversity, equity, and inclusion. For example, creating a time to talk about social justice and racism forum. You've introduced meeting structures, weekly contact with the buildings, monthly meetings with the directors and the bargaining units. You've sparked the introduction of inclusive schooling and Project Lead the Way strengthened alignment between buildings around the MTSS multi-tiered systems of supports process. You've established and fostered community partnerships with Hastings Historical Society, the Youth Center, Peacock, Police Department, and many other government agencies. You have elevated student voice through surveys, research, and presentations. You've moved the budget and the bond forward with Maureen's partnership. You've moved curriculum, instruction, and assessment forward with my partnership. All this and much, much more while promoting an aspirational vision in the midst of a global crisis. You've taught me to see the moving parts of the system from a district perspective, pushed me to communicate in a way that answers questions in advance and affirmed the need to center students in every single decision. We have no doubt that in your retirement, you will continue to dream big and engage as a trailblazer. I am thankful for your support and mentorship these past two years. Thank you for everything and best wishes in your retirement. <clears throat> Valerie, first and foremost, I want to start off by congratulating you on an amazing career as an educator. But as I always say to you, Valerie, when you talk about your retirement, Although you are moving on from this chapter of your career, I know that you're just beginning a new one, and the sky's the limit. Um, you have so much to offer and so much energy to do so. I honestly have to say that I have never met anyone in my life who has the amount of energy and passion you do for public education. And I'm super excited to see what that'll take you to next. 
When I reflect on the last two years working with you, I have to say it has truly been an honor to work for you and with you. After working in the district for over 20 years, I feel like I have learned so much from you in such, in such a short um, two years that we have been working together. Some of the things that stand out um, to me are, although as Melissa shared, there's so many and, and I could be up here for hours talking about them, um, but, but some things that I think will have helped me um, understand you know, the time to slow down and, and meet with folks was creating more opportunities to communicate with our stakeholders, both internally and community-based. You've taught me that the importance of making time for people to be heard so that we can make sure we are listening when we're making our recommendations. Um, introduction of the administrative comment portion at the board meeting, um, as well as um, having me provide capital updates and financial updates, and by creating this space, it really helped me think about the important things that we should be highlighting at each board meeting to, to ensure that we're um, informing the public of, of what we're working on. It also helped me reflect on what we do and help us to continue to improve our communication district-wide. Um, you've expanded, help me expand the idea about the Budget 101 series to not only include just the financial data, but to really look at what is our vision for students in, in the upcoming five years and how that should um, help us focus our decisions when creating sustainable um, budgets over a five-year process. Um, also thinking about how our students will need to enter the workforce, which has also pushed um, just from our numbers, but to think really about the students' needs. These are just a few of the many things that you have done to help me grow. I know how deeply you care about students, and honestly, I love seeing your joy when you're around them. You always led with your heart and are a champion for children. I will miss your quick wit, your laugh, and your amazing leadership. Thank you for leading us through the pandemic and for all your support. I know this isn't goodbye, and I look forward to hearing about the next chapter. Okay, now we're gonna chose a book to read to you today, Valerie. Um, so I'm going to start off. The book is called I Wish You More. I wish you more ups than downs. Um, I wish you more give than take. I wish you more tippy toes. Probably not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you more tippy toes than deep. I wish you more weed than make. I wish you more hugs than ugs. I wish you more woohoo than wow. <laughs> Whoa. I wish you more will than hill. I wish you more can than not. I wish you more snowflakes than tongue. I wish you more pause than fast forward. I wish you more umbrella than rain. I wish you more bubbles than bath. I wish you more treasures than pockets. I wish you more stories than stars. We wish all of this for you and more. And there are some wishes that we would like to share on behalf of each of the buildings and departments. So from Hastings High School, uh, the wishes are no longer having to act on changing mandates <laughs> and sleeping in. From Farragut Middle School, beautiful weather along with a green thumb for gardening, great pinochle partners, and visits to museums on your travels. From Hillside, book clubs for sheer joy, an array of travel opportunities without restrictions, true lunch breaks with time to enjoy a meal with good company. From the district level departments, dear Valerie, on behalf of the athletic department, student athletes and coaching staff, we would like to wish you all the best in your retirement. We want to thank you for always being supportive and one of our biggest fans the pandemic could have shut down athletics for us, but with your help, leadership, and support, we were able to participate in something that means so much to us and accomplish great things. 
We thank you for that. We all truly appreciate everything you have done for us. Although you will be missed, we are happy for you. You deserve a relaxing, rewarding next stage in your life. Best wishes from all of us for anything and everything you and your family choose to do. You will not be forgotten. Drew Wendell and the entire athletic community. From Special Education, dear Valerie, on behalf of the Special Education Office, we want to wish you peace, success, and the continued opportunity to make a difference in the lives of children. Dear Valerie, the school counseling department wishes you all the best in your retirement and in your future travels. From facilities, dear Valerie, I hope retirement brings you the opportunity to fill your time with everything you enjoy, wishing you all the best life has to offer. Dream big, there's nothing you can't do. And now some remarks for, from Lauren Berman, board president. Sure. Thank you, Melissa. From my experience in other schools as a teacher and as an administrator, I've seen that it can be a common pitfall for many professionals involved in schooling and education to lose sight of the very significant point that we are creating institutions for children made of relationships that shape our children. It was my impression from the outset of meeting Dr. Henning Piedmont that she genuinely does not lose sight of that central fact. And it is actually the lens to her inspirational approach of leadership and her thoughtful perspective on decision making. Dr. Henning Piedmont has more than 30 years of experience in public education. With tenured positions as a humanities teacher in New York City, assistant principal in White Plains, director of instruction and professional development in Clarkstown, Assistant Superintendent of Instruction and Professional Development in Clarkstown, Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment in Brewster, and Deputy Superintendent also in Brewster. She began her career in education in 1988 as a reading teacher at Diker Heights Intermediate School, and was most recently the Superintendent of Schools in Brewster beginning in 2016 until she came to our district in 2019. This evening, we recognize Valerie in her retirement and thank her for her service to the Hastings School District, our students and families, our administration, faculty and staff, and to our community. I would like to particularly recognize Valerie for her three key aspects of her leadership while as our superintendent of schools. Together with the board, Valerie determined in 2019 that to build stability, the district needed to work on defining roles, processes, procedures, and practices to ensure that the system operates coherently. One very concrete way Valerie has achieved this is her leadership of our policy audit that was completed in partnership with Legal Counsel NISBA and the Policy Committee. While dry sounding, as a public institution, updating and uniformly reviewing all policies is a central aspect of all the work that is done on behalf of our students. In addition, with Valerie's leadership, the district began conversations necessary to understand the continuum of teaching and learning K-12 for all students. The meetings and committees she helped foster will be the foundation from which the district can start to build cohesion, continue to identify the needs of all students, and drive toward the creation of aspirational goals and vision for the district. Valerie has done this by supporting the work of our assistant superintendent and the deep work of our chair council, content committees, and the creation of the teaching and learning synopses that have been written K through 12. Last and certainly not least of all, Dr. Henning Piedmont should be recognized for leading the Hastings School District through the COVID-19 pandemic. If ever I am lost at sea, in the dark, during a hurricane, with the winds shifting, in a ship whose designed to adapt to a storm, with more than 1,600 young souls and more than 200 adult souls holding on for their lives, with the compass spinning, I would want Valerie at the helm. As board president this year, I never once feared Valerie wasn't responding to state directives and simultaneously preparing for multiple operations. I trusted her because she was constantly connected to the state agencies and regional colleagues that were trying to keep our community as safe from the virus as possible and trying to uphold our commitment to educating children. 
She was always thinking of our community's children. We spoke at least weekly, and during the height of the pandemic, a lot more than that. And I would enter each meeting with so much of our community's fear and so much of my own anxiety. And as soon as I would hear Valerie talk of our operations, our progress, our safety, our children's learning, I was at ease. The work required 24-hour vigilance, focus, and dedication, and Valerie kept us afloat and moving forward. For as much as it was difficult surviving this time in history, in our community, in Hastings, it would not have happened without Dr. Henning Piedmont. We honor Dr. Henning Piedmont's service to children's education across her 30 plus years and in many area communities and congratulate her on her retirement. On behalf of the Hastings on Hudson Board of Education, thank you. Valerie, we wish you well. And your valuable work here will continue to serve us all. Congratulations on your deserved retirement. Thank you. to the educators um, or we're marking the educators no <laughs> we're going to pause and return to the remainder of uh, the retirement recognition who include educators teachers aides and custodians and at this point we're going to recognize uh, board of education members who are uh, finishing their service at the end of this school year I'd like to recognize and thank Senator Andrea Stewart Cousins for being here this evening, very busy. She's going to recognize our three Board of Education trustees who are um, ending their term this year. And so as she reads your name, if you could kindly come down and stay there because we have a few other things for you. Well, first of all, uh, I really feel that uh, I was absolutely blindsided. I had no idea you were retiring. Where did you go? <laughs> <laughs> I, it has just been, uh, you know, they said awesome, uh, my, my opportunity to serve Hastings and to really be part of this community in so many ways. I remember being uh, here when I first ran for Senate and one of your very enterprising young people, I lost by 18 votes, and he decided to have me, I remember I was on this stage, just talk to the, to the young people about what that felt like. And he was so interested in my thoughts and what I was gonna do, and really encouraging the next stage of community involvement, not only for me, but for his peers. And I'm sure now he's probably uh, a young lawyer or, or, or a producer or whatever. But I've always been so impressed by Hastings. And I will say, say uh, that when I met you, I think we were together at the, um, at the Thanksgiving mm -hmm. dinner we mm -hmm. that, that the community, again, hosts for the, for the homeless. And I remember that was the first time I met you. And I was just so excited and we promised that we would actually have a moment to, you know, sit down and talk about education and so on and so forth. And then everything happened, COVID happened, the world sort of changed so extraordinarily. But I am happy to know that 
uh, with your leadership, your tremendous leadership, you were able to steer this great school district through all of the uncertainties. And I am sorry I don't have a proclamation for you, but uh, I guess this is who she is because they called the offices and get the proclamation for the trustees without mentioning that you were going to start another chapter in your life. So I wish you the very, very best, and I thank you so much for all that you've contributed throughout the years to our educational system and to the future of our children. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So much. <laughs> and who knows, one day maybe we'll actually have a chance to have that meal. <laughs> so to the business at hand, please, may I see uh, Jody Meyer? Jody, we have a proclamation for you. So, Jody, this is your day, and you are going to share it with your other colleagues who are leaving. Uh, so, if Lauren Berman will come down. And Jeremy, and Jeremy Arnon. I am in awe of all of you, and you especially, I guess you've been part of this Board of Ed for such a long time. You, everything from the Vice President to the liaison, it has been, I know, tireless work. And I, I can't imagine this is easy, but after the COVID experience, I'm sure that it's something that you, um, but I I wanted to, uh, to say on behalf of the New York State Senate that this is indeed your day. In fact, the last, and, and this is for all of the honorees, says I State Senate, uh, Senator and Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins recognized the significant contributions and accomplishments of Jody Meyer and will join with the residents of the 35th District to proclaim this day, June 21st, 2021, as Jody Meyer Day. So Jody, thank you. Jody, trustees, members, you are my heroes. Because you don't get anything to do this. <laughs> and yet what you do get is <laughs> that you all can, yeah, I know you've got a word that I didn't say, but it's there. <laughs> so for Lauren, this too, you've served uh, many committees, policy, facilities, finance, community leaders group. It's just uh, amazing what you've done. And you, unlike Jody, didn't even spend that much time. And they got you to do everything really fast. Uh, so I want to, and I didn't read all of it because, uh, you know, I would, I would, there's a lot of other things happening. <laughs> but I just want you to know that you will be sharing this day. The same thing goes for you. It is your day in New York State. Congratulations, Lauren. It is so nice to see the um, recognition and the genuine feelings that people have for the work that you've done. Again, this has been an incredibly difficult time. And to think that you'd be called upon uh, not only to do this free service, but to do it with all the passion and compassion and intelligence that you have, but then to have to do it in the midst of this pandemic. 
and guide this ship. So uh, we are all very, very, uh, you know, obviously proud of what you've done. We know this has come to an end. And Jeremy, uh, you two have liaison for Hillside Elementary School, and you have worked with fellow board colleagues too. And this is the big one uh, to pass this $18 million casing. All of you did that. We know that sometimes communities are not thrilled to know that they have to go in their pockets to improve <laughs> the uh, schools, and then there's the issues of, well, do I have kids anymore? There's all kinds of things. So it takes real leadership, and it takes communication with the community, and it takes a steadfast belief in what you can do if you only work together to get a big bond like that done. So congratulations. Your legacy will be built, all of you. And Jeremy, it is your day in New York State as well. <laughs> to leave the stage, I want to present you with some certificates. These are coming to you from Westchester Putnam School Boards Association. Presented to Lauren Berman, Board of Education Trustee, in recognition of your service, commitment, and dedication to our children, families, faculty, and staff, for your service from July 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2021. On behalf of the Hastings on Hudson Union School Free District, Board of Education and Superintendent. to it three times. <laughs> <laughs> Presented to Dr. Jody Meyer, Board of Education Trustee, in recognition of your service, commitment, and dedication to our children, families, faculty, and staff, July 1st, 2008 to June 30th, 2021. Hastings on Hudson Union School Free, Dis Union Free School District from the Board of Education Superintendent of Schools. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, presented to Jeremy Arnon, Board of Education Trustee, in recognition of your service, commitment, and dedication to our children, families, faculty, and staff. July 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2021. Hastings on Hudson Union Free School District from the Board of Education and Superintendent of Schools.
<laughs> um, <laughs> I thought about this moment for a long time, and there are so many things that I would like to say, and I'm sure most of them will fly out of my head. Um, this is, for me, an incredibly bittersweet time. Um, I, I can't imagine not being on the board. I feel like um, this has been so much a part of my life for so long. Um, I know for my family it is more sweet than bittersweet. <laughs> um, I think they'll, they're happy and they'll be teasing me, certainly during COVID. They, got their fill of my saying, I have a board meeting tonight, I have a board meeting tonight, when they really lived it. But um, it, it is really um, a sad time. I could never decide before not to run for the board. And I think my kids were blown away when I said to them, really, I'm really not running again. Um, but I do want to say a few words about having been on the board for 13 years. When I, when I first uh, ran for the board, my youngest son, who was soon turning 30, was 18. He was entering his senior year in high school, and, um, and that seems like a very long time ago. So much has happened um, in that time. And I guess what I'd like to communicate here are just a couple of things about this district, which is such a very special place to be, and it made it so easy to be on the board through good times and bad, through difficult times and more easy and even fun times. Um, but we all know the it takes a village idea and we also know that Hastings truly, truly is a village and our school district is a village. It is a place to bring your children, raise your children, educate your children. And um, like every other place in life, it is, um, it's not always pretty, it's not always easy. There are bumps on the road for everybody, for kids, for parents, for teachers, for administrators. But the thing that, for me, about Hastings, it is such a place of people coming together to work together for the interest of children. And I think that's what people say in most school districts. But I've seen it here now for 13 years, close up, and um, this, district has an incredibly dedicated group of teachers, of administrators, of board members, of, of, of staff members, of custodial staff, people who, who work beyond what people should work given what people are paid to do, all for the best interest of kids. And I you know, I thought about, did I want to mention particular people? And then I knew I would leave people out, but I don't think I could let this evening go by without just mentioning a couple of names of people who've kind of been there with me through it all. Um, Maureen, we've been through a lot together. Um, Lou, you came on just at about the same time I did, and we've been through a lot together. Uh, Fee, um, you're always there in the background and people don't even know the extent to which you're here and to which you make this district run. I do, and I really appreciate it. George, you were here from the beginning of basketball, right? I mean, you were the <laughs> one who was there on Saturday morning to open up the gym. Um, and um, I, I also, even though he's newer, I have to mention Joe, who's here in the audience, who has been an incredible mainstay to this district to making happen the things that we do when we pass bonds. Like, look at this auditorium. Jeremy Gallant, you were a student here. You know what this used to look like. And it's really <laughs> different. Um, and that was one of my greatest pleasures, was passing the bond um, that did this auditorium and that um, uh, refurbished, to say it lightly, um, <laughs> Reynolds Field. Um, to this day, as I drive down towards Reynolds Field, I feel like if I did anything for Hastings, it was Reynolds Field, um, next to rec basketball, I guess. <laughs> but, um, um, and that was a turf, those were the turf wars that we went through. That was, <laughs> those were the turf wars. And we didn't get the turf, but we got the field. 
and I think we all know that we ended up in a really good place. So I'll try to move us along. I, I have worked with some incredible boards and I have worked with some very difficult boards. I've worked with a lot of superintendents who have all given what they could to the district. Um, I, I do want to say that um, um, I, I know what it's like to be a part of a board that works well together. Um, I did that for many years and I've done that again, I have to say, with this board. I'm very proud to have been a part of this board who has worked tirelessly and collegially in the, over COVID and during the past several months. I have been incredibly impressed with this board. And um, as a parent, I want to say to parents that it's not easy. It's not easy having your kids go through 12 years here, but it's a wonderful place to go through 12 years. It's never perfect. I was thinking about sort of teachers that my kids have had, experiences that they've had, and my kids both had basically pretty wonderful experiences, I think, but they had their bumps in the road. And I have to tell you all that keep this in mind, that one of my sons had a teacher who was probably one of the only teachers I can remember that was ever um, gotten rid of, I don't know what the right word is, <laughs> after having tenure. So you could imagine that that was probably not a great teacher to have had. And yet, he did fine, and he's fine, and he's thriving in his life. And just because of that one teacher, that one difficult year, the time we think, oh, if I could, if I could only have Mr. Tuber for my teacher, everything would be great. And then you get Mr. Tuber, and Mr. Tuber's having a hard time in his life, and he's not the great teacher. So you gotta learn to roll with him, <laughs> is one thing I wanna say to parents. It all works out in the end. It really, really does because of the people who are here who really care. And so finally what I'll say is um, about the board. Um, it's very hard to leave all of you and I feel like I want to say I'm still here but I know there's nothing I'll be able to do in some ways maybe. I won't write you lots of letters. I promise. You got my promise. <laughs> I won't start letter writing campaigns, I promise. And I, what I'd like to say to the new board members is that you are joining a group of four board members who are an incredible foundation um, for what you're going to be needing to accomplish. And I urge you to, um, what I really urge you to do is drop your conceptions, your preconceptions and your misconceptions at the door. Forget about it. Give it up, come in, listen, and learn. Because there is so much for you to be learning and hearing that you don't even realize. Um, even in terms of things that we're gonna vote on tonight. You just don't always know the whole story when you think you do. And the most important thing that you can do as a board member is take your time and learn what it means to be a board member. Learn what you do when people write you individual emails. Learn what you do when you go to the farmer's market and someone says, Alex, what do you think about the fact that they're in the And how do you answer those questions? Because you know what? Unlike Andrea Stewart Cousins, when you're a board member, you're not elected to Congress. You're not elected to the state assembly. You don't have a constituency. You are here for the district. You're not here for just for the people who elected you, you're not here for your own children. You're here to do what's best for the schools, what's best for the district. And so I just urge you that the best thing that the new people coming on board can do is take your time to learn what your role is as a board member. Take your guidance from these four people. Take your guidance from our new interim superintendent who has had a lot of experience and everything will fall into place. So with that, I will just say that um, I'm not going anywhere. Um, Steve and I will be back for another round of rec basketball. <laughs> and um, it has been an absolute, it has been an honor and a privilege to be here for 13 years. And I thank you and I love you all.
So I had prepared to say something at the end of the board meeting, but this, what I had to say is timely for this moment. So, um, and I wish I could speak off the cuff, but everyone I think knows it's not really my style. I <laughs> plan things in advance. Um, I want to thank the community for the privilege of serving the Board of Education. I want to thank uh, my board colleagues, those present, and those who served with me in 2018 and 19 for their commitment to the district and our students. A special mountain of thanks goes to Vice President Sylvia Robles, whose calm and humor and willingness to be involved as needed certainly de deserves attention. I want to thank Valerie and Melissa and Maureen for your collaboration, your determination, and the ways you make growth and achievement possible for all of our students. Thank you, Melissa De La Barrera and Fee Goodman, for your administrative support of the board. I need to thank my husband, Keith, for supporting me in all ways possible, my children for understanding my commitment, my in-laws and brother-in-law for hours of childcare, <laughs> and the corral of additional babysitters that made my work on the board possible. I would like to encourage new board members to spend as much time looking inward as outward. This is a key mode of operation that I learned as a board member during the pandemic. Look inward to build cohesion of goals that serve all of Hastings students and provide some readiness to build district-wide aspirations and vision. And look outward to see not only what other districts are doing well, but how and to see other aspects of government and community that can assist in our goals. And most of all, I want to encourage the new board to listen to students, listen to the data of their achievement and growth, listen to the fact that they are more comfortable with pronouns and situations and people that are not binary, listen to their interest to be not only tolerated but celebrated for their differences, their skin colors, family constellations, languages, abilities, genders, and histories. Listen to students who won't or can't speak up because teachers and administrators have unions, parents have each other, and ultimately the board's effort will fulfill its purpose when we make reasoned decisions on behalf of our students. I originally sought a seat on the Board of Education because the system was not serving my own student well. As an educator, I knew that leadership that is inclusive of all students would have implications to reach my own. And without having to advocate for the specifics of our own child's needs, I am pleased to say that the kindergarten experience my one child had in 2014 was not replicated in my other child this year in 2020. The experience had greatly improved, even with the challenges of the pandemic. Our system has difficulty retaining leadership, and that inability, instability, excuse me, forces most parents to hunker down and just focus on what each of our own children need at school. That, in turn, forces the system to avoid progress. It forces us to avoid the kinds of change that impact more than our own student. Each parent is so worried about their own student that it forces us to avoid creating a collective vision, a plan, a pathway that all students and families are walking on together. So instead, we sometimes have unlevel paths that can benefit the loudest, most threatening, or most connected among us. We sometimes have a system of placating adults in place of serving students. With stable leadership, and the foundation to build a district vision, we can make a pathway for all children. I am hopeful that my time and work here has gotten Hastings a little closer to building a vision for learning and collective aspirations for all students. A lot of what I imagined I would do was put aside to help us progress as safely as possible through the pandemic. Despite the enormity of stress in this unruly year, it was truly my pleasure to serve on the Board of Education. And I'm grateful to have had the trust by the community to do so. Thank you.
not going to speak very long because I just want to get back to uh, all the retirees. And, and uh, I just want to thank Valerie. Uh, this is over the top appreciative. Thank you so much to Senator Stewart Cousins. You're right, this, this does say a lot about the type of person that Valerie is, and, and I really appreciate it. Uh, if we keep doing things like this, no one's ever going to run for the board again. So, so I, uh, I appreciate it. But I, you know, I've only been on the, the board for one term, but I, I'm really proud of what we accomplished. We, we, we got the bond. We did a lot of great things. And during COVID, it, it, you know, I always say I can write a book about, about the, the, the stuff that we did. But I really I, I want to thank the, the board members, especially Doug, who wrote me into this uh, years ago. And, and, I don't think he'll ever be able to pull himself out, <laughs> but uh, you know, really appreciative of, of, uh, of you know everyone's support, and uh, you know let's let's get back to all the great retirees. So thank you so much. Thank you, Senator, for coming. Good night. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator. So now we will resume the retire retirement recognition. If uh, Luke Edipietro could please join the podium. Thank you. And Ms. Walker is going to transition and tell us uh, the process because we're going to embarrass the uh, retirees by having you do like a Mr. or Miss America. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, I'm Lynn Walker. Good evening. I want to just take this opportunity to recognize our 2021 staff retirees for their commitment to the students of the Hastings on Hudson School District. And amongst them, they have many years of experiences and we really appreciate and will miss them. Our hope for our retirees is that they'll all enjoy a long and healthy retirement, basking in the glow of knowing that they were loved and appreciated for so many years. So not all of our retirees are in attendance tonight, but I want to list their names. They're David Felberbaum, Stephanie Hammond, Let's Sandy Lutzker and Juan Billamar. So in absentia, we wish you all the best. <laughs> but we are happy to have here Naomi Gilbert, and we'd like to ask Louis Adipietro to come and say a few words. Miss hmm? Gilbert, you will have to go over there. <laughs> yes. While Ms. Gilbert's coming up, I, I do want to thank uh, Dr. Henning Piedmont for her two years of service here and wish her well on her retirement. Um, I'm jealous, quite frankly. Um, but on behalf we talk of, about that a lot, Lou, right? Yeah. I'm almost there, Valerie. I'm almost there. On behalf of uh, myself, of course, but on, on behalf of the administrators, uh, we wish you well uh, in retirement and please stay in touch. As far as the board members are concerned, we know sometimes it's a thankless job, um, but we appreciate the work that you do. You know, we as administrators, and especially building leaders, see a glimpse of some of the things that you get sent to you in emails and so forth and so on. Um, and, and you always handle it with grace. And we, we absolutely appreciate all the support that you've given us. So Lauren, we wish you well. Thank you. You're not going very far. No. Sophie's coming up to ninth grade. Um, Jeremy, you're also not going very far. Bianca is already in high school, uh, and you have others that are coming up. And Jody, you and I go way back. Um, Jody actually was on the board that appointed me principal uh, 12 years ago. So, you know, there's a special place in my heart for Jody. And Steve, I don't know if he left, but he did. Is he here? No, he left. And rec <laughs> basketball, she knows my entire family. You know, I had her, her younger son, so we go way back. Uh, so you're not going very far either. We'll, we'll stay in touch. So. I'm here to talk about Naomi, though. So let's talk a little bit about Naomi. Just so everyone knows and it's clear, Naomi didn't retire till like yesterday. Um, she waited till the very, very end. Went to Maureen, I think, 16 times to extend the deadline for retirement. Um, and it was a really tough decision. And I, I kind of encompassed wife in my few notes that I wrote down. 
Ms. Gilbert comes from a family of educators, and as such, she wanted to do everything in her power to go to a different career path. She worked in the restaurant industry, dabbled in real estate, even worked for publishing and printing companies. None of these professions made Naomi feel invested or fulfilled. After a life-changing event, she realized that art was her true passion. And specifically, teaching art to children was what she really was destined to do. With a bachelor's from Boston University in painting, she was accepted to Columbia University's Teachers College and received her master's degree in art. And we hired her in the Hastings Public Schools 27 years ago. She spent all 27 years of her career as an educator here with us in Hastings. She began in the middle school and shortly began teaching in the high school as well. In 2015, she was selected as chair of the art department for grades K-12. She has been an excellent leader and an advocate for the arts. Her students have always provided nothing but the most positive of feedback. And Ms. Gilbert has always reciprocated with her kind and always positive and infectious personality. Her students have won many art contests and have even had their work displayed at the Bruce Museum in Connecticut. Thanks to her vision, our most gifted artists now display their work in our annual AP art show that Naomi created. Deciding to retire was not an easy decision for Naomi. and She waited until the very last minute to turn in her letter. This is because she absolutely loves what she does. She's had an exceptional career, a career that she can look back to with pride and admiration. All I can say is that she did it the right way. So on behalf of the Hastings, all of the Hastings students that you have touched in some way, and all of your colleagues, congratulations, Naomi. Job well done. Naomi, you'll have to walk up here, please. And you get to shake all of our hands. That's the Miss America part. We have got George Giannone and Calvin Williams. Joe Maturana, would you please come and say a few words? So six years ago, I came to Hastings. I was blessed with an amazingly hardworking um, facilities department. I inherited that. And uh, these three guys, George Giannone, Juan Villamore, and Calvin Williams, are three of the best. And I appreciate it. Thank, I'm thank, grateful for you guys. Calvin. Calvin has been a dedicated... I'm sorry, Calvin, you'll have to come up. <laughs> Calvin has been a dedicated reliable and hardworking employee for 21 he years here in Hastings. Calvin has always been a soft-spoken, kind, and humble gentleman. He is a man who walks his faith and has integrity, and who I could always rely on to get the job done at the night, on the night shift. Calvin is someone who is very good at his job and knows all aspects of his job, which is the reason he became the go-to guy at night when the supervisor was out. I have great respect for Calvin and his abilities, and he will be sorely missed, especially in the summers where Calvin was the best in the district at doing carpets. I remember every summer for days Calvin laying carpets out in the hallway, 
and shampooing them with great pride. I recently was talking to Calvin's night supervisor and he said, Calvin was the best cleaner and carpet guy and that he is going to be very hard to replace. He was worried of how we're gonna replace Calvin. <laughs> so he had the respect of all his coworkers and myself. Calvin, congratulations, God bless you. I know that you walk by faith and I pray that that walk takes you to all the places your heart desires. Enjoy Jamaica, enjoy your beautiful family, and thank you for all the service of Hastings. Calvin, you get to come back. George? <laughs> George Giannone has been a dedicated, reliable, and hardworking employee for 24 years here at Hastings. I personally have never met anyone who cares about the building he works in more than George cared about Hillside. It was a great comfort to me knowing that George was always going to do the best he could and that the building would always be ready and look its best under George's leadership. Another thing I always admired about George was how much he cares about people and that, and that treating people fairly was in the forefront of his mind always. George is someone I have grown a great respect for through the six years I worked with him. I always respect someone who wears their heart on their sleeve. George, I have had many conversations, most good, some bad. <laughs> all, all honest. And it was in those conversations that I learned the most about this man's heart. He was always concerned about people and always tried to see the good in everyone. That is truly a great attribute. Another attribute I learned that George possessed through the years was his God-given gift to speak and speak out. <laughs> <laughs> A gift that sometimes got him in trouble. I would often tell George, you need to be slower to speak and quicker to listen. I'm not sure if he heard me. <laughs> but he has many, um, many meetings and, and uh, events that we went to, I would often look forward to hear what George had to say, and I think everyone else did too. Anyway, George, we want you to know that you will always be missed, and you are missed. You are a special person with a big heart. Everyone has great respect for the work ethic you possess in your giant, generous heart. I can remember when we first heard that you were retiring, Amy Case has called me into the office and said, how are we ever going to replace George? And I thought, I know, I agree. The fact is, we will never be able to replace you, George, because you are the one of, the, one of a kind and someone who will always be remembered for your tireless energy and determination to make Hillside the best it can be. I pray your retirement brings you many years of blessings with your wife and children, also that they are filled with unforgettable memories, good health, God bless you, all the best. Enjoy. He wants to speak. Can he speak? He wants to speak. He wants to speak. I told you. I have to thank you people because uh, this board of bed has done more for my custodians 
than any other Board of Ed in the 23 years that I am here. Mm -hmm. You really opened your heart and stepped up for them. I mean, uh, I can't appreciate that more. That really made me feel so good. Jews are not on this pedestal. You'll always be on <laughs> this pedestal because of that. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank the, the community, too, for always being there for me, my teachers, my principals. Uh, I, I ain't going to mention everybody's name, maybe one or two, like Myers. The Myers, I love you. <laughs> Maureen, you were always there for me. I went to one day and I said, Maureen, you got to help me. You got to help. She said, what's the matter, George? I said, my daughter needs a part-time job in the summer. God, George. Or something terrible happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you in the bottom of my heart. Thank all of you. I really appreciate how you really stepped up for all of us. families who feel that they would like to uh, exit the meeting, you certainly may, um, because the, the remainder is primarily business. Um, and thank you so much for joining us. It was such a pleasure to recognize your work for the district for all the years you have. placement of services for CSE and CPSC. Um, and uh, I just want to ask the trustees if there are any questions or comments regarding these placements. Is there a motion to approve the placements for CSE and CPSC? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? The next item is the tenure recommendation for Melissa Szymanski. Dr. Henning Piedmont. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to recommend um, Ms. Melissa Szymanski um, for early tenure as assistant superintendent for, for curriculum and instruction. Ms. Szymanski joined the district at the same time that I did in 2019. And um, her tenure date would be 2023, but the recommendation is to move uh, the tenure date to this year. 
effective June 30th of 2021. Given the contributions made by Ms. Szymanski, which are many, um, it's so important to maintain further stability in the district, uh, which is why er the early recommendation of tenure to me is a necessity. Within a few weeks of arrival in her first year, Ms. Szymanski had to focus attention on student needs due to a significant shift from No Child Left Behind, also known as NCLB, uh, which was driven by student test scores to the Every Student Succeeds uh, Act, uh, which made student growth, equity, and access primary considerations. Ms. Szymanski was the curator of these changes and spent tireless hours poring over various reports um, that were provided by the uh, New York State Department of Education. During the summer, school districts examine all the spring assessment data in grades three through eight in English language arts and mathematics to identify any learners who do not make or did not make specific progress as deemed appropriate by New York State. Ms. Szymanski worked closely with school administrators to identify students who were not making progress over the course of a number of years. Along with school administrators, she conducted a gap analysis which was an essential and uh, analytical tool to, to identify the particular areas of need and the resources to close these achievement gaps. Another important function overseen by Ms. Szymanski involved the organization of a curriculum thought group to begin a system-wide conversation about curriculum and instruction at all levels. This conversation involved internal and external stakeholders who shared their insights about how curriculum, instruction, assessment, the learning environment, and professional learning are viewed by these stakeholders. This helped to facilitate ongoing discussions across the district that prepared us for a K-12 discussion about transparency and alignment. Discussions from book studies, especially around the book, What Could School Be? by Ted Dentersmith, served as an anchor text to consider what factors contribute to innovation, coherence, and sustainability. Ms. Szymanski, Ms. Szymanski collaborates with teachers, department chairs, and administrators to examine the content areas of mathematics and science to align the curriculum to the New York State learning standards. Curriculum committee work is ongoing and continuous. Collaboration across all grades and content areas has also produced curriculum synopses that outline the broad strokes of the learning plan. During the pandemic, seems like it was years ago, <laughs> Ms. Szymanski worked endlessly with teachers and administrators on the development of the remote learning plan and the redevelopment of the remote learning plan and the redevelopment of the redeveloped remote learning plan. Her happy hour was a mechanism for ongoing collaboration and professional learning with teachers who were using new technologies to provide remote instruction. When schools reopened in September of last year, Ms. Szymanski worked with teachers and administrators to identify assessment tools to detect learning gaps. The special education report conducted a number of years ago referenced the importance of an assistant superintendent to oversee curriculum, assessment, instruction, and professional learning, which contributes to improved outcomes for students with IEPs. Ms. Szymanski works alongside the special education leaders and building leaders to implement recommendations and to identify gap-closing practices. Ms. Szymanski has worked tirelessly and with a laser-like focus on the needs of children while also supporting educators and administrators. The work underway needs to continue and Ms. Szymanski has been a steady advocate and leader. With enthusiasm and confidence, I recommend Ms. Szymanski for tenure effective June 30th, 2021. Thank you, Valerie. Are there any questions or comments regarding this tenure recommendation? I, will, I would like to say something. Um, I, I'd just like to say um, that I very much appreciate, Valerie, what you have to say about Melissa and um, that I want to be very clear for people who are here and people who are watching um, that our decision as a board to um, grant early tenure to you, Melissa, is because it was something that we talked about and we agreed was a good thing for our district. And that I, in thinking about coming to the meeting tonight, I wanted to really go on record for saying that this was not 
in any way an end run around anything or anyone. Uh, wasn't an end run around any process, um, a new board coming on board. It was about what do we think we need to do at this moment in time for our district in the best interest of, of the district, of the children. And so um, uh, for me, it, it, it's a no-brainer. And quite frankly, if I were to fast forward two years, um, I, uh, I have no doubt that you would be getting tenure anyway, just based on what you've already done, given the numbers of people who I've been through who've been granted tenure. So it's a pleasure to be here to be able to vote on this for you this evening. I also wanted to explain my thinking, um, as we discussed as a, a board and came to this um, agreement, um, that you know, in a few years there there is going to be a dearth of uh, administrators. There are a lot retiring, and we know this is on the horizon. Um, and it was very important to us to show Melissa. Um, that we really stand behind the work that she's done, that we believe in her, that we want her here. And um, Valerie enumerated m uh, the many areas she's worked in, worked on. Um, but I wanted to highlight that this is somebody who is highly organized, um, so up on um, all of the regulations and procedures and um, you know, has gotten us grants that we've never received before to offset costs that we otherwise couldn't have um, funded. Um, and all with um, grace and time um, for anybody who has questions. And if she functions like that during <laughs> this um, crazy two-year period, you know, I can only imagine um, what we will see when things settle down a little bit. And um, so in that way, it was the stability um, that we wanted for our district um, with yet another change occurring to say, this is, you know, the work ethic and the um, smarts and the passion for learning um, that we want in our district. And we want to say yes to that. So, thank you. As a board, we try not to talk uh, directly about personnel. Uh, everything we talk about, Melissa, was always positive. I appreciate your hours, your efforts, your ideas, and your thinking. Uh, this vote I'm going to abstain on, though. I don't. Uh, I don't really believe in early tenure, but we are so lucky that we have you helping us with the transitions next year and the year after that. We are so lucky that you found our district and a role in our district. And uh, every year you stay makes our district stronger. So I don't want it to be misrepresented that, uh, that this vote would be uh, about the person because it's not the person who is running is strong, but uh, I think it's going to be unanimous. I just like uh, I'm a stakeholder, and I don't. Uh, I did tenure, and I am a little concerned about how it looks. Uh, us accelerating tenure in one spot, but not for others. But I know this had uh, all positives when we discussed it. Thank you, Melissa. I'm also going to abstain. I, I unfortunately wasn't able to be in the discussion and uh, haven't really had a chance to fully understand all the different sides. Uh, I think you're doing a great job, as everyone said. Uh, you know, to Jeremy's point, uh, I've never been a huge fan of, of early tenure, um, and I just haven't had a chance to really. A lot of times with the board, you know, things happen very quickly, and uh, unfortunately. I wasn't able to be a part of the discussion, so I'm going to abstain from the vote as well. I have a couple. Do you want to say something? About it? No. <laughs> um, uh, I want to say something about Melissa. I also just want to say something more broadly about stability in the district. <clears throat> 
Yeah, I think I naively came on the board uh, five years ago thinking that <clears throat> stability was an easy thing. You could provide, you could produce, you could create somehow with just the right this and just the right that, and all of a sudden it magically comes together. And <clears throat> uh, boy, have I figured out that's not the case. Um, <clears throat> uh, so what do I do? What do I think about? I think about how can we get ourselves in a position to create that stability, realizing it's just a system of so many different things, from board members to educators to teachers to administrators, and there's a certain kind of secret sauce involved in it. <clears throat> and as I've watched you over the last two years, Melissa, I, I see you as a critical piece of that secret sauce, as a foundational piece of that. Um, <clears throat> I remember hearing five years ago when I first got on the board about vertical articulation, horizontal articulation, how critical it is to have a vision from K to 12, to have a vision across the grades, and how critical it was to have that integrated uh, between grades and to have it consistent across grades. And then something came up the first year, and then something came up the second year, and then something came up, and we didn't have a leader to do that. And your leadership um, in bringing together very busy professionals, very busy teachers uh, who all have their own ways of teaching and their own ways that they've built up over time. Um, and really shepherding that process has been impressive. And I've really appreciated your uh, ability to do that. And um, you know the output we see, which is this skeletal framework of a K to 12 articulated curriculum in terms of synopses. And, um, on one hand, they look like a lot of one or two sheet pages from Microsoft Word, and behind that, there was an inordinate amount of collaboration and um, uh, just pulling a lot of different people's thoughts together. You know, and I think that's something you're very good at, which is um, how do I bring voices to the room and make sure they're all heard, but make sure we're still moving forward, right? And I think that's the trick of collaboration, um, and. When I think about what we need foundationally, do you bring that? I think we need that as a district, and I think you can be a great role model for that as we move forward, and you can't do it alone, right? We all have to do that work together. And um, uh, so to back to my original point, um, early tenure for you, I, I see this as a vote of confidence. That's how I'm voting it, as a vote of confidence that what I've seen Probably in two years, you've probably put about four years of effort in already. <laughs> so one could argue she's already has four years under her belt, just in the sheer number of hours that you've put in. Um, and uh, you know, I'm really excited for the things to come. Uh, and, and thank you, Valerie, to the foundation you've helped build because I know a lot of that was a partnership with between the two of you, uh, as you've. Um, really taken on a lot of big topics. And um, I've said this to you before, Melissa, I'll say it again. I think our big key is how do we move not too fast and not too slow at the same time? How do we find that right pacing? Um, because I think it's all in the pacing with this work. And how do we stay in, in uh, connection and communication with the community throughout, right? So I think that's just so critical. So I uh, wholeheartedly support this early tenure. Thank you. I'm going to speak very briefly and just say how appreciative I am of the fact that you were the person who stepped into the role of the assistant superintendent of curriculum and instruction because we didn't have somebody at that level at the time that you joined our district. And I have seen it, that in this short tenure that we've enjoyed having you and Valerie as partners at the helm of this district. I have three children in this district one at each school, I see the immense progress that has made under the most dire of circumstances. And there are not enough words that I can use to express to you, as a parent, as a board member, for what you have sustained, for the time that you devote to your work, for the true consistency. I see it and I appreciate it every single day that you give, every single hour of commitment. People don't see that. We do. And I see it not solely in the timestamp of the emails that I receive from you. I see it in the real world difference it makes in my children's learning. I can't capture that in words. 
but I thank you. And you are the right person to be elevated to this person. You're the right person now, and you'll be that much better in two more years. Thank you. Well, so much has been said already, and I just want to add that in 2018, it's hard, it's hard for folks who may be new to the district to realize, but uh, the board couldn't agree about uh, having this role at all. Um, and it was one of the things that I argued for most was to have an assistant superintendent of curriculum and instruction. And I could not have imagined that the person who would fill that role would be you, Melissa, um, and what you've accomplished. I can't even fathom where the district would be through this pandemic without the role in general, but then you in that role. I think it would have been an impossibility for our district to survive and provide the type of instruction that our children deserved with a lean central office without that role established. So I fully support the notion of providing early tenure. It, Lauren, is it appropriate to have you just explain to some people um, who have asked this question um, about you know the nature of giving input for tenure or that sort of thing when it comes to administrators and that process? Well, I do. I do want to stay because there were some questions in the community that came toward the board today, uh, asking about community input, and I just want to. Uh, say for, for anyone um, who is interested to know that there is no policy or practice in regard to community input for any tenure position, that the role of the Board of Education is to provide that input, and any untenured employee is receiving input in their daily work, whether it's from their supervisors or from other community input. There is no separate time frame by which a t an untenured employee has a, a period of review, but rather um, it, it's a part of their work in the district and it's ongoing. So there was no step missed other than the suggestion that the tenure occur earlier. Does that help? Is that Thank helpful? You. Is there a motion to approve the, t the tenure for Melissa Szymanski? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? All opposed? All abstaining? Congratulations, Melissa. Thank you. I'll be brief in my remarks and very long in my gratitude. Um, so it means a lot and I love this district. And I wanna affirm my commitment to the members of our learning community, especially the children and all the responsibilities associated with my role. I do not take that lightly. Valerie, I want to thank you for making the recommendation. And to the board, I want to thank you for your support, your faith in my leadership, and your commitment to the continuity of this district. And Maureen, I want to thank you for your partnership. If you only knew how much you anchor this place. And to our team, Melissa D. and Lynn and Fee, I'm very honored to work with all of you this district is a very special place and it is truly my pleasure to lead here and learn here and i want to recognize the faculty all members for their incredible efforts in support of children and it's been tough the pandemic and i really look forward to our continued work together and i believe in us and i'm really proud to be here thank you
just the announcement that the high school graduation will be uh, this Thursday, June 24th at 6 p.m. at the Burke Estate. So we're Yay! Yes! yes. Keep your fingers crossed for good weather. Okay, um, so now um, we have administrative comments from Melissa. Yes, I just <laughs> wanted to congratulate our wonderful music department on their recent outdoor performances and specifically I'd like to recognize the successful Hastings High School concert in late May and two recent seamless middle school concerts Thank you to our talented, dedicated musicians and to the entire department for persevering through the pandemic and making sure that this show went on. So thank you for our music department. Ms. Sophia, do you have a student report? Or any comments? I do. Great. <laughs> Um, okay, so first, uh, the Academic Challenge team last weekend won nationals for the fourth year in a row, wow. which is very exciting. <laughs> and I had to miss the last meeting because I was at prom, which was so much fun and such a great way to end a bummer of a year that <laughs> we were at the waterfront, it was beautiful, the weather was perfect, and I'm so grateful to Mr. A for making it happen. Thank you. <laughs> and this is my last meeting, but I would like to thank the board a lot. Um, the past two years, it's become very, very clear to me that this position is not just for show, and every time I speak, it's clear that you listen to what I'm saying, and that made me work really, really hard to make sure I was expressing the opinions and feelings of my fellow students. And um, Sabine and I, Sabine can't make it tonight, but we received many applications, and we selected our next liaison, and I'm so excited for Gus Rezin to come in next year. So thank you so much, and uh, well, I've learned a lot. I've learned how to speak in front of real people here. I've learned how to speak in front of many people on Zoom, which I think is harder. I've learned that, well, on some days I've learned that I definitely don't want to be on a board of it. <laughs> and <laughs> on other days I think this is definitely in my future. So uh, thank you so much for having this position and for taking it seriously and listening to everything students have to say. Can I just make one comment? Of course. First, Sophia, I, I want to thank you for taking this position seriously because when, when you first took it, I remember talking to you about it and uh, you know, some student liaisons have not taking it that seriously from what I've seen. Some didn't show up, some, uh, but you actually put some thought into it. Uh, you took it seriously and your comments you showed up and, and your comments were always uh, a glimpse into what students actually are thinking. And, uh, and you know, that was really valuable to, to me. I think it was valuable to the, the other board members. And, and, but I just really appreciate you actually taking it seriously. I hope that, I don't know if Sabine's doing it again next year. So I hope that Sabine and Gus take it as seriously as you do. I, you, you showed, it was a great model of what this position is supposed to be. So Thank thanks you. so much. There's um, a suggestion to move um, one of the appointments up. Um, because we actually have the uh, appointment attending the meeting this evening and we'd like to have an opportunity before the meeting goes much longer um, to, to have him present. Mm -hmm. So um, at this point, um, we uh, would like to um, ask Amy Cases to come on up.
Good evening, everyone. I want to begin by congratulating so many of you, Valerie. I've known Valerie since the days in Clarkstown, and Valerie was a wonderful leader then and continued to be so here. Hmm. So Valerie, best of luck to you in your retirement. Also to our board members who are moving on, Lauren, we'll be seeing you very soon in first grade. And Jody, thank you so much for your service. And Jeremy, also thank you so much. I am very pleased to be here this evening to speak on behalf of Michael LaRocco. Michael LaRocco has been a classroom teacher in grades two through four for the past 13 years at PS41 in the New York City Department of Education. He spent 10 of those years in an ICT setting. In addition, he served as acting assistant principal from July 2019 to June 2020 during a one-year vacancy. Mr. LaRocco holds a Bachelor of Arts in English from the State University of New York at New Paltz, a Master of Science in Childhood Education from Adelphi University, and a Master of Science in School Building Leadership from State University of New York at City College. He holds certification in Childhood Education 1 through 6 and School Building Leader. During his tenure at PS41, Mr. LaRocco has served in a variety of leadership roles. He has been the teacher representative on the school leadership team, ICT liaison, equity committee member, affinity group facilitator, data specialist, grade leader, and building union representative. In addition, Mr. LaRocco received the honor of being nominated for the 2021 Big Apple Award, a distinction that recognizes and celebrates New York City teachers who inspire students, model great teaching, and enrich their school communities. His references describe Mr. LaRocco as a responsible, smart, dedicated, reflective educator. He is a team player who has voluntarily taken on any role and provided support wherever it has been needed. Mr. LaRocco is skilled at building relationships with students, colleagues, and families. One reference shared, we'd love to keep him forever, and another <coughs> shared, you'll be getting a great educator one of the kindest people I have ever met. We are excited to welcome Mr. LaRocco to our Hillside family and know that he will be a wonderful asset as the new assistant principal to our school and our community. Thank you. So this, um, this is actually um, personnel, which is 6A appointments and it's uh, number five um, that we're looking at. Are there any questions or comments regarding uh, the recommended appointment for Michael LaRocco? Is there a motion to approve the appointment of Michael LaRocco as assistant principal at Hillside Elementary School? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Welcome, Mr. LaRocco. Thank you all. Excuse me. Thank you all very much. I greatly uh, appreciate this time and this opportunity to work with Ms. Cases and uh, join the Hastings family. Congratulations to all the retirees. Uh, best of luck in your next uh, chapters. And uh, I know we'll probably see much of each other uh, on an informal basis, perhaps. But congratulations again. And I'm looking forward to uh, starting up in, in a couple weeks and get rolling. So thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> And Mr. LaRocco will start on July 1st, but is here this week. So welcome and thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll just modify the minutes yeah. to reflect the correct yeah. date. If there's an error in the um, document that's uh, posted, but his uh, effective date is July 1st. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we'll modify. Yeah. So we want them in sooner than later. <laughs> we want them tomorrow. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> he did. Well, thank you. Welcome. Bye-bye. Well, so um, we will now jump back to the order of the agenda at this point. Um, this is an opportunity for public comment. Um,
the public may comment uh, to the Board of Education, if you could please state your name and if you're a resident of Hastings. Uh, your comments are limited to three minutes. If you could please limit the first comment period to any items related to our agenda. Thank you. Hi, good evening. I'm Doreen Bucher, Hastings resident. Um, I just wanted to take this time to thank the outgoing board members for your service. I really appreciate all you've done. I don't know what I'm getting myself into probably, but I listened very closely to Jody and Lauren to your advice. Really appreciate it, heard it, took it in. And um, to the administrators, I hope that I am as good a board member as these three have been for you. So thank you so much, guys. Doesn't appear that we have any further comment. I do, I do have one oh, Melissa has one that uh, she received to read. Thank you, Melissa. This is from um, Jennifer Destin, Barbara Rizzo, Melissa uh, Sperga, and Kafira Wilderman. Um, they sent in a letter to the board and they asked me to read it tonight. Dear Hastings Board Trustees, as parents of children in the Hastings schools, we are still thrilled to see that Melissa Zamansky is being recommended for early tenure and enthusiastically support this recommendation. In her two years as Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction in the midst of <clears throat> unprecedented educational disruptions due to the pandemic, Ms. Zamansky has not once stopped thinking about how to optimize instruction and outcomes for all learners. This is evidenced by her data-driven reevaluation and optimization of the district's K through 12 math curriculum. Ms. Zemanski developed a path forward for, by collaborating with teachers and department chairs across all three schools. She also took on other initiatives that have been requested for years, including her work with teachers to make public course synopsis, reevaluating the district's curriculum using a culturally responsive framework and much more. Ms. Zemanski operates with a listen and learn style that allows stakeholders to collaborate and find common ground and optimize solutions. As we look to the next two years of changing district leadership, the district's goal of supporting all children educationally as well as emotionally can best be achieved by re retaining Ms. Zemanski. We strongly believe that the con continuity of her leadership will help the district achieve success. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Melissa. It doesn't appear that we have any further public comment. We'll move on to the business items in the agenda. There are um, 10, uh, excuse me, 19 items. Are there any questions or comments regarding the 19 items of business? I just want to personally point out that I'm pleased to see items 17 and 18 um, in the business items. 17 is uh, allocating resources to uh, work with big ideas. It's a proposal for a new mathematics curriculum resource. And 18 is an agreement with Project Lead the Way, which is a STEAM and engineering program that will be accessible for our middle school and high school learners. And I know that um, our community will greatly uh, benefit from these two new pieces of curriculum that will be infused uh, in the middle school and high school. Is there a motion to approve items one through 19? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? We now have uh, two district appointments. The first is a resolution appointing Melissa Szymanski as interim superintendent of schools commencing on July 1, 2021 until July 31st, 2021. And the employment agreement cor corresponding with that. Are there any questions or comments regarding this appointment? 
Thank you, Melissa. Is there a motion to approve the appointment of interim superintendent Melissa Szymanski for July 1 until July 31st, 2021? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Thank you, Melissa. We'll make sure that nothing big happens in July. You know that it will, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> She's just jinxed it. <laughs> the second uh, is 5B. It's the resolution appointing Dr. William McCursey as interim superintendent of schools commencing August 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022, and the employment agreement for Dr. William McCursey. Are there any com comments or questions from the board regarding this appointment? Is there a motion to approve the appointment of Dr. William McCursey as interim superintendent of schools commencing August 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Congratulations to Dr. Mercursi, and I knew, do know that he has reached out uh, to various stakeholders about uh, times he will be on, on site in district for uh, meet and greets until his uh, beginning date in August. We then have additional appointments, and we've already done number five. So uh, this would be appointments one through four and then six. Are there any questions or comments regarding these appointments? Is there a motion to approve the appointments one through four and then six? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? There are four amendments. Are there any questions or comments regarding these amendments? Is there a motion to approve the amendments one through four? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? There are two leaves of absence. Are there any questions and comments regarding these leaves of absence? Is there a motion to approve leaves of absence one and two? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? <clears throat> there are the minutes for the June 7th, 2021 Board of Education meeting. Are there any questions or comments regarding these minutes? Is there a motion to approve the minutes from June 7th, 2021? So moved. And a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? <clears throat> we'll move on to old business. Um, there are, the first uh, item is regarding the American Rescue Plan funds and the Coronavi Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act funds. Were there additional um, pieces of information that needed to be presented to the board? Yes, so the plan for the disbursement of the American Rescue Plan Act funds was presented previously, um, but we do have some slides for the CCRSA. Um, they're just being uploaded now. I guess for, for tonight, I can just walk through them here and then um, the, the presentation will be online for the public to, to uh, watch through if Patrick may just need a minute to get it up. Um, board docs too. It is on board docs, exactly. So um, tonight we just wanted to um, give an update again on the other um, amount of money that we did receive in addition to the ARP funds, which is the federal, oh, 
sorry, Federal uh, Coronavirus Response and Relief Act <laughs> Supplemental Appropriations, um, also known as the CRRSA. And um, just to remind the board and the public that we did receive an allocation of $1.5 million. Um, I, on the slide deck, there's kind of just a breakdown of, of the buckets in which um, the, the federal government broke that down. But overall, there's kind of like a set aside amount, but um, you know, we'll speak to how then you know, some of those amounts have to be um, used or allocated for specific reasons. The, um, the grant is retroactive and you are allowed to go back um, starting with March 13, 2020 through September 30th, 2022. Um, sorry, go to the next slide, three. Um, so just some examples of uses of funds, um, any activity, and again, this is, um, there's about 18, but I'm just kind of like at a high level kind of um, adding some things in which we've been looking at in, in terms of how we're making recommendations for this um, spending of this fund. So it is any activity authorized by the IDEA Act, which is the, um, it's for Students with Disabilities Act, addressing the academic impact of lost instructional time among the um, students in the district and including low-income students, students with disabilities, English language learners, racially and ethnic minorities, and students experiencing homelessness, COVID-related expenses dating back to March 2020, purchasing of educational technology, mental health support, providing principals and school leaders resources to address their building-based needs, implementing activities for summer learning, enrichment, and supplemental after-school programs, inspection, testing, upgrades to indoor air quality, including air conditioning systems, window, and door replacements. Um, so again, just looking at the $1.5 million we have, and, and as I mentioned, much of this money can be used to reimburse districts for funds that they've already allocated um, since the beginning of the pandemic in March 2020. So at this point, we've broken down, um, you know, the, the allocation to kind of three buckets in which we think, um, you know, we, we, as we think about writing this grant. Um, the first part is the academic impact of lost instructional time, including, um, as I mentioned, the um, IDEA component, summer and after school services. And for that, and this would be, of course, moving forward, um, starting sometime this summer, and we're allocating $700,000 toward that um, to, to those needs. We are looking to um, reimburse the district for COVID-related expenses um, for about 600,000, although we know we did spend more than that, but right now that's the recommendation to refund us as we are also going to um, to try to, um, sorry, I'm just so tired. I'm <laughs> trying to get some additional FEMA funds to close some of that gap. So as of right now, we're looking to put about $600,000 in this grant toward um, those expenses we've incurred. And also looking at the potential of facilities upgrades, including um, air conditioning, as, as well as some additional windows that are, are in need of replacement. Um, how we kind of look right now, we, we have been speaking, Melissa and I have been trying to gain some input. Um, Melissa's been working with the building levels, as well as some of the chair people to kind of get some ideas and flush them out about where we think the money should be spent. And again, this is also um, coming in September, you'll be doing some screeners to kind of get better understanding of where those needs are. So currently these are some of the ideas in which we're going to build some into the grant. Um, supplies for a daily living skills classroom that will be established here in the Farragut complex for both middle school students this year and um, in, in, in following years, high school students as well. Passion projects, including school mural projects, transition coordinator position. These are, again, some, some items that came through, um, both through our survey data as when we were looking into how we would spend our ARP funds, as well as other feedback we've received. Uh, creating AIS support periods in the middle school, especially in math and science. Adaptive technology to assist students in those AIS classes. Mental health, uh, first aid programming, and that was recommended by our guidance department. Challenge success funding, advisory programs for the high school and middle school, creation and funding of extra classroom um, activities, and we'll, we would be working with our um, the HGA leadership and development of those positions. Direct instruction over the summer months, including a possible summer bridge program for, for next summer. 
Um, students' needs would be determined through a diagnostic assessment. Um, some idea, also ideas that were brought up were professional learning for teachers, such as uh, professional learning in areas of literacy, dyslexia, universal design for learning, and also um, putting funds aside to allow for further collaboration for all of our teachers to, to, to you know, fund in order for them to be able to work together with their teams, um, identifying working for individual students and curriculum. Um, the COVID-related expenses are pretty straightforward. Um, I think we the last tally was over, well over a million dollars. Um, we would be looking for this, the reimbursement here to target expenses such as personnel, um, including nursing, additional nursing services, staffing, substitutes, leave replacements, um, obviously the, the dividers, which it would be nice to get some money back on those. And as, as you're aware, <laughs> we have so many of them, and upgrades to our ventilation system that we made early on. Um, I, I don't know, Melissa, if you want to add anything else at this point. So this, uh, we did talk about different funds um, that we are able to apply for through the uh, grant process. And with this one, um, this technically does not require the input process in the same way the other one does. However, that still continues to be very important to us. So we have been looking close to the work, to the people doing the work, to ask, you know, based on what we've seen, based on what students' needs are, and based on what you're living on the ground, um, help us to understand what would be most beneficial. So we're working through all of that together now. And there's a lot of overlap, actually, in terms of some of the things that were originally suggested from that input and discussion um, process. And a lot of um, direct support came up in terms of how we might implement funding. Um, and, and so we're continuing to look at all of that. And it requires um, you know, taking a look at, at actually working the numbers on each of those things and then making sure that you know, we're looking systemically at what that looks like at the elementary school, the middle school, and the high school. So. And the grant is due mm -hmm. July 15th. Right, oh yes, we have the extension. It's still coming up quickly, but July 15th. And, and with any grant, we'll be able to, to tweak it if, if when the screeners are administered in the fall and we found we need to shift some of that to another um, area, we could. We would have the flexibility to do so. And considering we probably won't have approval until the fall. <laughs> yes. so that was just an update on those funds. So the idea that July is quiet is untrue because <laughs> you're going to be busy submitting all these proposals. And we do have a lot of good curriculum work that's already underway and um, I suspect that even engaging in that process in July will also be generative. Um, so we'll continue to look at, at our moving, shifting data points and involving some voices as we figure out the allocation for that one. Uh, to both of you, uh, or either of you, the numbers are obviously round and friendly and uh, early. You mentioned, Maureen, we had over a million dollars worth of COVID expenses. Mm -hmm. How do we decide uh, how much we'd want to claw back as a naive, uh, you know, non-budget guy here? Wouldn't we want to claw back as much as possible so that... Uh, we'd have as much flexibility moving forward. Uh, would we want to go, um, or why did you guys think about a seven, six split instead of a one million clawback and 300,000 split? Well, well, part of it, you're right. I mean, does, gain us greater flexibility in getting some of those reimbursements because that money comes back into our coffers and then we can have more time to use it. I think, as I mentioned, we, we needed to get some kind of framework with the grant and, and part of the, um, the piece in terms of that reimbursement, I'm trying to also see how much money we may be able to get back from FEMA prior to that, as well as like E-rate and some of these other funding sources that are out there. So if, um, if say, instructional technology and some of those other um, connectivity costs that we incurred, we may be able to get money out of E-rate funding, which is a specifically to technology, as well as the FEMA um, with cleaning supplies and, and things such as that, and, and PPE. So um, the, the, the areas of expense that we incurred that I feel like we would not be able to get back from FEMA is what we're kind of like shifting there. But as I had mentioned, we will, um, with all federal grants, you do have the opportunity to make adjustments. So if we found we did not um, need 
in one area or another as much funding, then we would be able to make that shift. So, but I think, you know, we understand there will be some um, immediate needs that will be happening next year, and we wanted to make sure that we did um, give ourselves some flexibility while we're flushing it out. Thank you for that. You're uh, in general, you know, my, uh, my first take on it would be uh, to maximize the uh, reimbursement. reimbursement. You explained why we're leaving some out there for other grants, but right. uh, definitely we'd like to control spending in a less rushed uh, manner. Exactly. And the more we could do clawback seems that the community would have more input, uh, whether to put it to uh, special education needs or other resources or to uh, affect the budget in other ways, but both of your leadership is appreciated, even if it's over a July 4th weekend. <laughs> Thank you. Were there any other uh, thoughts or questions regarding the additional federal funding that's coming through the Federal Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplement Supplemental Appropriations Act? One thing I do notice that I appreciate is uh, regarding the $700,000, the, that round number that will be allocated in terms of direct service to students, that, um, that there's a variety of, of service that's provided, that it's a balance of academic intervention services, mental health, and also um, more holistic and creative opportunities for learning to build um, <coughs> greater social stamina and uh, community growth. So I think that um, the input that you receive from our educators, I think I, I like that there's a balance of all those components um, because I think um, it will reach a larger portion of the student community. So I guess I will now, should I just continue with yeah, the construction update? Yeah, continue on Sorry. to the construction <laughs> so, update. But I, I'm not sure if we're going to get on that screen. So again, these sl this slide deck, again, um, just um, we've been showing, as, as some people may have been following along, it's the in, progress. Yes, it's in board docs. It's in board docs, yeah. is, um, looking. So again, now we're starting to really get, um, you know, see some real changes. So in the first shot uh, on, on slide two, and I love when they do the drone images for us because we really get a, a really great um, sense of the project. So the, the first uh, slide there shows the before and after the start of the Pergola Foundation. And you can see um, the, the construction of the, the forms in, in which they use to pour <coughs> those foundations. Um, the second here is the creation of wall pockets in order to expose the existing structural steel and members in the existing hallway. And, and when you're actually in the room, you can see holes in which they're connecting into the existing structure there. So it's uh, pretty fascinating to see it both um, from inside the building and, and these shots as well. Um, again, this is really just amazing work um, it, to watch, watch these gentlemen. Um, do when they're and they do it so quickly um, here there's a, a the next few slides are the creation of the formwork and the rebar and the pouring of the back retaining wall footings so again there's a, a few shots about four shots in there um, again this is just a, another shot in which you can see the uh, back of those retaining walls being poured and now the front shot is uh, for the pergola footings. And again, this was a, a really big um, piece in terms of just getting them just exactly right on the site as every, everything else, the way that building flows is tied into those pergola footings in the front of the building. Um, just again, further shots of this. It was uh, pretty incredible to, to watch them do this work. Um, and then eight here, uh, I think the last time I had mentioned that they're bringing in the gas pipe from one side of the building over across the roof of Hillside onto the other side. And I did ask about the concern around storms and things, and they actually said this is an, a more secure way to, to run a gas line when, um, when I did inquire about that. Um, and then we can see the, the mobilization of the crane that, that came, I believe, last Friday. And um, even today, actually, there was video that, I, that was shared with me of them placing the, the different structural steel into the, um, into the uh, building. 
<clears throat> and then last but not least, we did have um, an, an inspector come onto the site this week <laughs> 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 to oversee to ensure that um, all the footings and things were. <laughs> this is fascinating. We are going to make uh, time for you to come to see yes. this behind the scenes. This is absolutely fascinating. <laughs> Melissa, Maureen, and I were there. And you can stay there for hours to hear the parts that no one will ever see, but that is the basis. It's the skeleton of the, of the, the building itself. Rob is fantastic. He's our construction manager. Um, and everything there has a story and a, and a specialized mm -hmm. tradesperson associated with it. So it's really a sight to see, and they're just so skilled and so tactical and so you know, brilliant in how they pull all that together. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many tradespeople are on site there at the same time, and Rob's job is to coordinate and, court, you know, and provide the choreography for all of that to work. So it's, just, it's going to be stunning when, um, it's, all, you know, when it's completed, and um, we are just very fortunate to have the team that's there. Um, but it's so impressive and such an enjoyable visit. It is. I, I would welcome many of you to come up and let us know when you want to come up and we'll bring you up to the site because <laughs> it is actually incredible and yet you have just even the amount of detail that, um, as I mentioned, the pergola footings and, and, you know, even when those discussions are happening, you have um, a variety of different engineers and architects and design architects and contractors and just the site, the, the site surveyors, and just to kind of get everything laid out perfectly and the different steps, it's really amazing and uh, makes you appreciate, although I know it was quite a bit of money, you can understand why when you're, you know, seeing the work that actually um, is required to cre create this building. So you want them to get the math right, a little smidgen <laughs> off, and it will not be right. Mm -hmm. It won't stand, so it's, so every, you know, every dollar that you invest, you're, in do you're, you're investing in the, sort of the quality and expertise of people who, who do this work. So, um, and they are doing it at uh, a pace that, you know, Maureen keeps them all organized. Maureen and Joe are really amazing in their oversight of every piece of this and every penny that can be saved, Maureen's on the case. You, I even have an inspector, an internal person coming out. No, it's great. If Valerie actually gets right in there, she's a little bit braver than I am. She she brings the correct footwear. And well, you didn't you didn't show the one where I was walking the plank. Because you have to walk the plank to get from one spot to the other. I was like, I don't know if you want but to. But you do look like you're peering into everything. You're kind of like. I Ooh. loved it. Every piece of it, I loved it. Wow. I was a little bit worried about you walking in those planks, though. So I know. <laughs> you, I, I, I saw both of you disappear when I did that. <laughs> about ten steps backward. You're like, I don't want to be present to tell that story. Definitely not. Definitely not. Thank you for sharing that, Maureen. You're welcome. Um, the last piece of old business um, are two pieces of policy. Policy 3230 and 3240. Uh, this is the second read of the organizational chart and a revision of policy 3240. Again, um, these are pieces that um, are part of the policy audit that's been going on throughout the year um, with the guidance of both district council and NISBA. Are there any questions or comments from the board regarding these two policies? So, so clearly 3240 is not one we would get from NISBA, right? Because that's specific to our district, is that, that's right? And, um, and I just want to make sure, I know, Sylvia, you sent this earlier today to um, legal counsel, but mm -hmm. they, they reviewed it not just for the one question, uh, but, mm -hmm. but for just the broader. Yes. Okay. Yep. Everything is above board and in legal compliance and has been guided by consulting with legal counsel every step of the way and in coordination with Ms. Szymanski. Legal did help craft the revision to 3240 directly and we wanted to make sure that it was moving back and forth to reflect accurately what was depicted in 3230. Okay. So yes, they've been involved the entire step of the way. Any additional questions or thoughts about these two pieces of policy? 
Is there a motion to approve policy 3230 and policy 3240? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Um, the two pieces of new business have to do with uh, just calendaring. The first is just um, to confirm that the annual organization meeting of the Board of Education will be on Monday, July 12, 2021 at 12 p.m. And the second is a draft of the recommended Board of Education meeting dates for the school year 2021-2022. Are there any questions or thoughts regarding these uh, two recommended um, pieces of the calendar? Is there, I guess I need to ask for a motion to approve both the date for the organizational meeting and the recommended meeting dates. So moved. And a second? Second. If I don't get to move it, I'm not second. All in favor? Um, we have the second public comment period. Uh, if you would like to speak uh, to the Board of Education, if you could please state your name. And if you're a resident of Hastings, the second co public comment period may be uh, regarding any district business, and we suggest that you limit your remarks to two minutes. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Dorothy Nagel. I'm the parent of a rising fifth grader. I've been a resident of Hastings for eight years. I'm here um, to speak on behalf of some old business from the last meeting in regard to the use of the American Rescue Plan funds. Um, I want to speak on behalf of the diversity coordinator's work in our district and specifically in response to some of the information that's been presented recently through the Love Not Fear project, which is building a case against the teaching of critical race theory. In some of the materials put out by this organization, in reference to the Sherman Alexi book that was taught in eighth grade English this year, this book is being referred to as a banned book. According to the American Library Association, a banned book is one that has been removed from the shelf of a library or school. This book not only remained on the shelves in our school, but it remained in the hands of all students who wanted to read it. So to continue to refer to the book as banned is to spread false information. The Love Not Fear project is also using a slide from Dr. Yolanda Seely Ruiz's presentation to students during the high school's racial equity day as an example of how critical race theory harms our children. The slide shows the pyramid of white supremacy, a graphic created to illustrate how individuals can remove the foundation for hate by paying attention to small, everyday acts of empowerment. In other words, it is a tool created for positive teaching. I looked at the same slide when I attended Dr. Celia Ruiz's presentation to our community in May, where I also learned that the foundation of her work is something she refers to as critical love a philosophy of relationship building and creating a culture where students know they are loved and cared for. Because without love for our students and the teachers who support them, change will not occur. To use that slide out of context. Your time is up. Uh, thank you, I'll, I'll wrap up. To use that slide out of context is to use fear as a weapon against love. I've seen the success of Racial Equity Day in our high school spread to the middle school and to Hillside where the date of their event was June 11th, which is Loving Day. I'm going to end by saying that if you're paying attention to what's really happening in our schools and the work of Dr. Mateo Toledo, you'll see that it is truly motivated by love, not fear. And uh, love and joy are all over the work that she is doing. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I 
I don't see any additional public comment. Are there any comments from the Board of Education? I'd like to go first because uh, I've served the least, so I'll save the best for last. But um, it's probably very unprecedented having three strong and experienced board members leave us all at once. So I think it's uh, quite obvious that uh, we were lucky for uh, your service. 13 years, three years, president service. Thank you guys all. It's been a fun experience. It's been a, a tough year to learn. They say your first year you're supposed to uh, stay low. Mm -hmm. I uh, don't do that well, but I do uh, listen more than it looks like. So uh, you will be missed. I, uh, I wish uh, Andrea Stewart Cousins was still here because as I've said to Lauren before, I loved voting for you the first time when you didn't win and the second time when you did. And if anybody wants to see a really interesting history, our majority leader had a ridiculously difficult first election when she jumped from our county to our state senator. And Lauren did not have as difficult a run, but thank you for running twice and uh, serving your way and uh, Jeremy I'll see you at the Jets and Jody I'll see you on the streets thank you guys thank you Jeremy I just want to say add one little comment that I apologize to Patrick Theodore that I didn't um, give you a shout out um, <laughs> when I was thinking about the people who were here who've been through through it with me from the for the duration, and you've certainly been there um, uh, all the time and into the wee hours of the night sometimes, and um, even loaning your sweet Damon um, to be a rec basketball referee <laughs> and player. Um, so it's been wonderful also. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to say just a couple of words. Um, I'll start with uh, Jeremy and uh, Lauren. Uh, first, Lauren, thank you for uh, your service for three years and being a president for during this year, which was um, uh, uh, brutal. Let's be honest. Um, <laughs> ridiculous is another word. Yeah, we're just ri ridiculous, um, and. Uh, you know, I think before you get on the board, you don't, you've got an idea of what you're supposed to do, and then you realize, you know, those three balls turn into 72, and you're not sure which ones to catch and which ones to let drop. And, uh, but I think you've really stayed through, obviously, a very difficult year on many levels, stayed, you know, focused, and, and really deeply appreciate that. I think what stands out most to me is your commitment to kids, and I think you always brought a lens, obviously, much deeper. And um, you know, grounded in your experience and your your training, um, that I think was a really important voice for this board. And I hope you can share that voice in ways, um, even though you won't officially be on the board. Um, and Jeremy, thank you for uh, stepping up. I think when I first asked you, do you want to run? You just two days later said, Yeah, sure. Why not? What's well, <laughs> I don't think you really thought about it at all. Um, and, uh, you know, that was the end of that. And he just kind of jumped on the board and, um, you know, brought his friend to most meetings and always had, uh, um, I just think, uh, kind of a nice, just relaxed energy about the whole thing. Like, eh, maybe we, should, we shouldn't get so worked up about this stuff. Uh, which, in many ways, is probably one of the better ways to approach board service. Um, so thank you for, for your three years. And Jody, our historian here, we're losing uh, our, our link to history and the past. And um, uh, I think uh, perspective, really. Um, so hopefully you'll be around, continue to be around, but I'm sure we won't be able to tap into your knowledge as well. But, um, you know, um, I'm somehow the elder statesman on the board now. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how that happened so quick. You guys all served, what, like a decade and 
and then all of a sudden uh, we've got this rapid turnaround. Uh, but you were always so thoughtful in all of your comments, and you always really try to take everyone's perspective into account. I think you embodied really what great board service is from that perspective, that it's, it's really about trying to see things from everyone's perspective. Uh, and then you have to make a decision, and you can't always take everyone's pers perspective as the lead perspective, but um, certainly as the data, um, I think you exemplified that, and in many ways you kind of trained a lot of other people on the board to, to embody that. So thank you, and for the million other things that I can't go through now, but thank you for everything you've done. Deeply appreciate it. I just wanted to say this was a lovely meeting. I really enjoyed hearing various people speak um, about those who were retiring, and I felt like they looked deeply to find um, the right words and um, to acknowledge where those people have really dug deep um, to work for children in our district. So that was a really moving part of today. I loved it. And I'm sorry I didn't speak um, to Sophia when she was here, but um, you know, one of my favorite parts in our committees is being on the um, board um, student union com um, committee and he just hearing directly from them. I'm just always sitting in there grinning like an idiot, but I, um, I just like to hear it from them sometimes and, and their perspective and what's on their minds. And um, as you mentioned to her directly, I appreciated that she um, brought in real news for us um, and did it very articulately in front of lots of people often. So thank her for that. Um, and to our board, the main thing I'm, I'm really gonna miss is that e each of you um, thinks about things in different ways. Mm -hmm. And I appreciated how many times I, I recognized, I didn't think about that. Um, and you brought up that new perspective. Um, and even though we come from all different backgrounds and jobs and, um, you really were, everybody was turning these issues over and forcing the rest of us to think and to justify why you supported something or why you didn't and what the next step might be. Um, and I'm definitely gonna miss um, the three of you and your input for that because it made a, real, a very big difference to me in helping me feel settled in my own thinking. Um, like I had thought from many different angles that I wouldn't have generated on my own. So thank you for your extended time on the board um, and to both both of you for uh, all the hours you put in thank you so i'm just gonna say a, a few brief things so you guys can go home for jeremy thank you for always getting down to business <laughs> cutting to the heart of the matter and keeping us on task you are an efficient board member what are we actually talking about and you get us there. Thank you. Thanks. For Jody, you served as the heart of the board. You really have always been driven, as Doug said, to make sure that all perspectives are heard and respected, but you always do that steeped in a place of mutually hearing people out so that people feel like they're heard with authenticity. And I thank you for teaching me that and not to think take things personally, especially when there's a lot of sharp elbows being thrown around. Thank you. And for Lauren, I don't, I don't think I could say it, you know, I, I think I'm just gonna say it briefly. You are prepared, you are composed, and you set an exceptionally high standard for the consummate professional. And you give it more than 100% every single time. But what I want to say to members of the public is that what unites the three of these people is integrity, hard work, and being focused on the best interest of the district, never a personal agenda. I respect them, and I thank them for what they have taught me in my short two years here by their example. In essence, we are public servants, and we've been very lucky 
to have such exceptional people be in service at an exceptionally turbulent time. So thank you to all three of you guys. We're gonna be so much the worse off without you here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I just wanna say, um, well first personally, just thank you to everyone who has said um, very meaningful words um, tonight to all of us, uh, words that you've said to me, I really, try to listen and really take it to heart. Um, um, and uh, I, I wanna say thank you to Valerie for, um, I didn't say it earlier, but for all of your heart and soul that you've put into this district over the past couple of years. Um, I, I, I've said it before and you know this is not who could have even ever imagined for any of us, but I think as a superintendent, I can only imagine that you one often thinks about or imagines sort of worst case scenarios and we've covered them all. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? I mean, this is just unprecedented and you have just, um, I, I, I know that you and Melissa and Maureen have put in probably more than 24 hours a day on many occasions. I, it, that I think we are a well, a, we know that on the board and really appreciate it, but I really much, I was thinking about this night when you said, Allison, about the evening, that there's something incredibly powerful about this moment when we could, um, so much of this evening was personal, really, and we could go from um, the contrast of, um, or in the same moment, I'd say, of um, honoring and recognizing a superintendent who's retiring to honoring and recognizing several custodians who are retiring, all of whom have had careers that they are proud of. And there's something incredibly moving about that um, in terms of valuing people for who they are and their roles and that whether you're the superintendent or you're the custodian and everything in between, you know, we couldn't exist without all of the pieces. And so there's something very moving about this evening having all of that there. But I really want to thank you and I want to thank everybody on the board. I think you have been just um, incredible teammates, you have been incredible team players, and I, 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 I say that from the bottom of my heart. You know I worked on a board for probably five years of people who were probably the most impressive group that I have ever been a part of as a, in terms of how a group process worked. But I have to say that you all have really stepped up with everyone's, as you said, varying perspectives. Um, professions, um, personal opinions, but the kind of respect and honesty that um, has kind of come together and to see everybody, we're here now, but for so many meetings on the screen, just looking at your voices and everybody being really digging down deep around difficult things that we've had to do and to talk about and decisions to make. Um, you've been a really impressive group, and I really know that for the four of you, you really, um, I, I have this image of a wagon, and the four of you are sort of the wheels that are gonna, kind of gonna move the district along. The new people, you, you got, kinda gotta go along for the ride a little bit until you sort of get some wheels too. But, um, <laughs> uh, you don't have to, but I, I, I would, I think that might be the best way to start the ride. Um, but I, I just feel very comfortable knowing that you're kind of going to be moving um, things forward. And I, I have incredible um, belief and faith and trust in, in you. And um, always around for whatever questions or complaining you want to do. <laughs> okay. Text. Thank you. I just want to say a couple things real, real quickly. Uh, to Jody, 13 years is unbelievable. So, uh, <laughs> it, it really is. I mean, the amount of stuff that you do 
for the district with, with basketball is incredible. And uh, I was only on for one, for one term, so I kind of feel silly I got out of it easy. I didn't even, I wasn't a president or a vice president. I mean, I have to run again. <laughs> I decided not to run again. When Lauren and I got elected a week later, uh, Tony decided that he wasn't gonna, <laughs> gonna uh, stay in the district. And, and uh, some people say, well, maybe, maybe you didn't know what you were getting into. I had a good sense, but, uh, but it was definitely a, a, a crazy three years. But I, I, I wanna also thank Sylvia and Lauren because you guys knew what you were getting into this year. You know? and, and thanks to Doug for being president for, for two difficult years, but, but you guys knew that this was a COVID year <laughs> and you guys stepped up and decided to be president and vice president. And I know how much time that is and uh, I was true to myself that I didn't have that time to put into to that role, uh, but I really, really respect the fact that you guys stepped up, especially this year. It, for anyone who steps up any year, but but you guys knew exactly what you were getting into this year, and uh, and I really appreciate you guys taking the lead for us. A couple hours a month, right? <laughs> oh, thank you. Two, two hours a month. Two hours. A <laughs> the old couple hours a month. Yeah, it's just a couple hours a month. I didn't say, Valerie, thank you to you, and I, and I, did, I did want to say that um, before the meeting ends. Um, you know, I don't think you can imagine, as, obviously, as many polarizing issues that you got thrown into the middle of. Um, a few. Yeah, they were, you know, I think they were, you know, it was like, choose one, lose. You lose this way, you lose this way. Which one do you want? I mean, it was like that, like that kept happening. And he said, okay, I'll lose this way. And then you just, you know, you stuck with it, with a work, with a, with a work ethic and a, um, an attitude that, you know, uh, a lot of people agree with and a lot of people didn't. And that was just the nature of the job this year. Um, and more, I think, in a deeper way than anyone could have ever. Um, so thank you for the um, effort and the grace that you, you uh, showed in handling that. Thank you. And Valerie, I just want to say to you one more thing, which is it's very easy for us to sort of think about the pandemic and what, how difficult that's been. It's a lot harder to think about what it, to put ourselves in your shoes and think about what it must be like to be a black female superintendent. And even in a town like Hastings that is supposed to be so warm and welcoming. Um, I, I, I can only begin to imagine um, all that comes with that, and that you, um, you've done it before you were here, um, and you know what comes to some degree with the territory, but um, it's, um, you do it with such grace, and um, I, I, I really very much appreciate that. I have this image in my head right now of that, you know, the picture of the Kamala Harris picture with the little girl, I guess it's Ruby Bridges. Ruby. Right? Walking. And my granddaughter has that in her room mm -hmm. above her changing table. Mm -hmm. It's just like, but I, 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 I uh, use your Ruby Bridges quote that you have under your signature. And um, I thank you for all that you have brought to our district. Um, in the area of pushing us to think daily um, and be uncomfortable about the issues that we all need to be thinking about daily and be uncomfortable about. Thank you. Can I just say a word or two? Of course. I'd like to thank the board for your dedication it hasn't been easy, and uh, none of us signed up for what took place. But because of all of you, and Maureen and Melissa, Melissa, Fee, Lynn, Joe, everyone, all the administrators, we're here without masks. So nothing else matters. Thank you. to
adjourn the Board of Education meeting. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jody. Jeremy. 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 Jerem